Richard Arrow, Money Gang. Salut ladies, and mostly gents according to my analytics. Today we're going to have a gander at Beyblade X's foremost stamina type, Wizard Arrow, sizing up all of its traits to see what sets this bay apart from its contemporaries. However, before we get into all that gubbins, this video is a part of a series, so if I may redirect you to the top right hand corner, there is a playlist with my other reviews. And if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe with bell notifications on to stay up to date with my latest videos. With the obligatory plug out of the way, it's time to examine Wizard Arrow for all it has to offer. If you've seen my previous two videos, you know what a starter set is. The bay comes with a ripcord launcher, which can be augmented with the addition of a launcher grip. The face has a three-pronged design for the first time in the series, and when the cord is pulled, you get roughly eight and a half rotations. Looking at the packaging, on the back of the box is a brief summary of the included part's strengths and weaknesses, along with part of the character who uses the bay in the show. Like with the previous starters, it also comes with the skill up guide sheet, which recommends a combo Dran Sword 3. I really have to stop mentioning the guide sheet if it keeps doing this. Other than the launcher and that, like the others, this starter comes with three parts. Firstly, the blade. Wizard Arrow easily has the least recoil of any blade so far, making it a definite pick for stamina combo, despite its slightly lower weight. We'll get to that soon, you know the drill. It features two long smooth contact points at either side to deflect attacks, with a small gap in the middle so it can technically counter attack, even just a little. It also is slightly more unbalanced than the other bays, however, in Beyblade X, so far at least, stamina types are taking a more mobile approach than in previous generations, all because of the extreme line. They want to avoid being directly in the center and vulnerable to an extreme finish. Of course, this is at a cost of its overall spin time as it is susceptible to toppling over, especially with a high ratchet. Which segues us nicely into... 480. Currently one of the tallest ratchets in Beyblade X, and as the name implies, has four contact points. Though, wouldn't a combination of 80mm height and more contact points be a downside? Not necessarily. 480 makes up with it with its higher than average burst resistance. I personally wouldn't use this ratchet for stamina because of those disadvantages. I'd prefer to use it on an attack or balance combo though, but that's just my take. And finally, the ball bit is nothing short of excellence, if you don't count its subpar burst resistance. It has great stamina while still bobbing in and out of range of the extreme line, and if launched correctly, can even utilize it itself. If on something like an anti-attack combo, it is one of the most useful bits in the game. Moving over to the scales, let's check out the part weights. As usual, first up is the blade, clocking in at a modest 31.91 grams, putting it in one of the lightest weight brackets comparable to Wyvern Gale and only heavier than Leon Claw and the Remake Bays. Next is the Ratchet, 480, weighing 7.06 grams, which is on par with all the other 80mm ratchets. And finally, the bit, Ball, which weighs 2.06 grams, around the same as all other bits. Taking away the parts for assembly, the process is the same as all other X-Series bays, the ratchet twists into place underneath the blade, and the bit slots into the hole in the center. Taking the fully assembled bay back to the scales, the whole bay comes in at 40.98 grams, a slightly lower than average weight, but with the bay's outward weight distribution, that should help it conserve inertia and stay in motion longer. With all we've talked about so far, I predict Wizard Arrow will be most useful in a drawn out match. I don't expect to be scoring any bursts or ring outs, but outspinning its opponent is more than likely in the cards for this bay. That said, I do think this bay is particularly vulnerable to attack types, especially ones that can attack from lower down, destabilizing or bursting it. Now, I think you know what time it is. Let's move over to the stadium for us to test out different launch techniques and see how it performs in some matches. Whoa, whoa, fight the power. Before showing off the test launch, I briefly want to mention launcher grip configuration. 
while not playing a massive role in technique, I personally prefer having my launcher parallel to the grip for flat launches and perpendicular for any kind of banked launch. Though, with Beyblade X, even with stamina types, it's usually best to launch at an incline to give your bay enough movement to not be at risk of an extreme finish. First is a flat, light launch. The first thing I notice is that its movements are incredibly passive, just resting in the center of the stadium. However, even with a light launch, its stability and weight distribution allows the bay to keep spinning for a pretty long stretch of time. Up next is a flat, hard launch. The bay has a decent bit more movement, but nowhere near enough to reach the extreme line, not that that would be to its advantage, before slowing and moving towards the center once again. And finally, a banked launch. This time, the bay actually does have enough mobility to reach the outer portion of the stadium and stay well clear of the chance of an extreme finish. It doesn't move fast by any means, but it has enough to outmaneuver stationary attack or anti-attack combos. This kind of launch technique will more often than not be the most ideal choice for any encounter this combo will face. Moving on to the test battles, the first bay it's up against is one it should, in theory, have an advantage over. The defense type, Knight Lance. Round 1 is fairly embarrassing. No flashy combo moves, but Wizard takes the recoil of Knight's contact points. It's destabilized and outspun by a defense type. In round 2, Wizard successfully avoids most of Knight's attacks and turns the battle into a war of attrition, exactly the right conditions, until one final collision knocking each other to the outer perimeter and Wizard just barely hanging on and outspinning Knight. Round 3, short and sweet. Knight rides the extreme line in position for an extreme finish to win the match, but Wizard doesn't budge and counterattacks Knight, scoring another two points. In round 4, it almost seemed like Wizard was cocky from the last win, trading hits with Knight slowly chipping away at its spin, resulting in it toppling over before Knight, and being spun out once again. Round 5 is anyone's game. Both bays have a chance to win with one good match. In a repeat from round 3, Knight goes on the aggressive and takes to the extreme line, hitting Wizard and self-bursting while Wizard is able to recover, winning the match. The next bay is one wizard has no advantage nor disadvantage to. Hell Scythe, a balance type. In the first round, Hell Scythe is moving aggressively and... It's already over? Two points for a burst finish. I wasn't joking when I said this thing really can't handle any form of attack. Shifting into round two, disregard that. Shifting into round two, Hell Scythe gets a big hit on wizard, but it's not enough to put it down. Moving around the outside, it comes into counter-attack and destabilize Hells enough to flip it over, scoring one point. In round three, again, Wizard takes a big hit early on, the recoil knocking Hell Scythe to the extreme line, and it misses. Having lost most of its stamina, Wizard is able to outlast it even after bouncing back from the pocket, scoring another point for a spin-out finish. In round four, Wizard lands a hit on Hell Scythe, causing it to counterattack, sending both flying, with Wizard bouncing off the walls and bursting Hell Scythe, winning the second match. And finally, Wizard Arrow is really put to the test against a bay it has a disadvantage against. The attack type, Shark Edge. In round one, Shark Edge seems pretty content to chill, that is, till receiving a love tap from Wizard, where it promptly shows the stamina type its place knocking it into the pocket, scoring itself two points, then does a victory lap as I try to catch it. Round two, Wizard starts by moving aggressively, bouncing off the extreme line without riding it, landing another small hit on Shark. Shark then retaliates, knocking it into the same pocket and bursting it, winning the third match in a flawless two rounds. My final verdict. While Wizard Arrow is a great stamina type, it has come to highlight all the strengths and weaknesses of its category. The days where stamina and defense were almost entirely intertwined back in burst are now just a memory. Wizard Arrow has great outward weight distribution along with good solo spin times and can reliably outspin most bays provided it's not taking any hits, which segues into its short fallings. While Wizard Arrow can surprise you on occasion as we saw against Knight Lance resisting those extreme attacks, it just doesn't have the defenses to beat an attack type 
other than relying on its small amount of mobility, and outmaneuvering the more mobile attack types by sheer dumb luck. Against a solid attack type, it's almost guaranteed to lose. Far from a bad bay by any means, there's just a reason why it's the foremost stamina type. Thank you so much for watching, if you indeed still are. I'm glad to be back making videos again. If you're at all curious about what was happening all this time, click the video in this end screen to watch my update video, and if you enjoyed this or found it at all helpful, check out my other videos for similar content. Anyway, that's it from me. Milgo signing off. Peace.